if you look at uh, before we move into the issue of security, we're still looking at conduct uh, from INX uh, point of view or INX side of the story. It doesn't look uh, very smooth, but we are looking at how we can make it better. Uh, for, as it stands now, can this election really be concluded again? Because we've seen a lot of cancellation possibly. Well, uh, presently, you know, um, events are still unfolding, considering that the process, uh, you know, didn't quite take off, uh, started behind schedule. Is that events are still unfolding as such. We do not have, uh, we can't say authoritatively whether, you know, eventually there will be enough cancellations to, to, you know, generally declare the elections inconclusive. Events, we understand that some elections will hold tomorrow. Exactly. In, those, in, in some exactly. areas where... That's right. It's actually against that background. You know, facts are still trickling in. Events are still unfolding. So, and we are watching it, you know, we are observing it, we are monitoring it very, very closely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, there was an incident with ha which happened in LMA. LMA local government area is one of the uh -huh. seven local government uh -huh. area, a very, uh -huh. very uh -huh. stronghold of some of these politicians and, of course, a flashpoint area. And uh, last time, they were burning of buses and election materials. This time around, China Television was on the ground in LMA to look at what really happened. And these are some of the reactions that we got. Take a listen. Uh, Prince Brain and Menagoba. Yeah, where are we? A little, a little. So what is that? Well, we are, you can see we are ready to cast our votes. Let me check. Which we are expecting, um, uh, we are aware that the material is on the yeah. way coming. So we are ready to cast our votes. We are waiting for the material to arrive. So are you know, I told us there was going to be comes, and um, this is 10 o'clock and not, yeah, you know, worried as of now. And they can go uh, we are we are worried, but the uh, information available to us is that they are done with a sorting of materials, and the material is on the way coming. So for now, I think there's no need to there's no need uh, uh, no need for uh, alarm now. We expect that the INF will do the proper thing. But where are INF is that you want to favor any political party, you can see that uh, we have the capacity to resist any form of uh, malpractice. So we are ready for peaceful. Credible and fair election. All right, the, uh, one of the youth leaders saying, how, talking about how they will resist any form of malpractices that come up in the exercise. Uh, that kind of uh, standoff that you see in some leaders, youth leaders, some voters who think uh, we may not have the strength to match you if anything goes wrong, but we will resist any form of malpractice. That kind of thing that these leader in LMA have said today. Did you see any of those kind of situation happen? My, my, I think that basically our attention is focused on stakeholder performances. Um, most of these side comments excites only, it creates only an excitement that is, it's the responsibility of security agents to ensure that there is no an order. So the comments that you make about what you resist and how you resist it, for me, falls within the arena of politics, and I'm not going to make any comments. But what is important is that I said yesterday, and carefully so, that election is polling center centered. centered. And at the polling centers, I saw reverse people determined to cast their votes. In places where they are unable to cast their foot, they make their voices heard. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have extraneous players, you know, trying to make comments that give the impression that they, they have an interest There's trouble, in yeah, city, there's tension here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to give them credit. I would, I would take not any interest. In uh, talk, talk to us about uh, the kind of turnout that we saw today and the fact that people came early and the fact that people still stood in the sun and it was almost raining Telling at some you. areas. What do you make of that? See, when it did, I, I've said it, I've seen determined, very determined people. But one error that we make in talking about turnout is that when you talk about turnout, you talk about turnout in relation to what exactly. is in the voter register. Exactly. And the number of people who are eventually exactly. accredited. Exactly. The, crowd, does the, crowd, the crowd does not speak about turnout. It speaks more about interested parties. 
and and many people continue to make that mistake. You could yes. see huge yes. crowd. You could see people sitting down exactly. who don't have voters cards. Exactly. Who are just there, exactly. you know. Um, yeah. Medusum in Talopas, if, right. if you like the right. use of that word. That's so, right. you don't talk about turnout in terms of the number of people that you saw, but I saw determined, very determined reverse people who want to cast their vote. The, the people who pretend to be representing them and the narratives that they put out is different from, this, from the solidarity, from the interestedness on wanting to cast their votes. I, 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 I saw a very an old man where the argument was taking place, he told the electoral official, I said, I don't know what you're saying. I want to cast my vote. Simple. Can you set this place up so that I cast my vote and, and go? go? He's simply echoing the mind of majority of people of River State. I'm actually very vote. interested in this kind of attitude of voters because awareness, political awareness, uh, at times uh, on our democratic values help us to drive the democratic process itself. And when you see passionate voters and passionate electorate, it gives you a sense of uh, the fact that they want to be responsible to their decisions and mm -hmm. their actions. Mm -hmm. uh, in River State, uh, it's one of those states in Nigeria, like Edo State, where you see passionate people in, uh, in politics. And maybe a lot of people say that's perhaps some of the reactions when you see them agitated in some areas. You see, the, the truth of the matter is this. The tragedy of political entrepreneurs is that they always, always underestimate these poor common masses and their votes. You know, I, I, I want to emphasize it more in the context of the speech of the president of Ghana. It was this, you know, it's, these little people you see, who the ones who register, take the pains to register and obtain their PVCs. They're the ones who watch the process. They're the ones who are invest, interested in governance. And they're the ones who will be patient to cast, you know, votes. But entrepreneurs, there are, there are, conf there are even conflict entrepreneurs. People who make their living by controlling, uh, you know, the, the, the conflict level. You understand? So these are the people, they always underestimate this simple voter. First, they will snatch politics. First, they will uh, will lay, you know, materials on the way. They do all sorts, and yet the voter is special. But one thing is certain: every other thing, yes, there was logistical challenge and all that and all that. The aware political awareness, you know, in River State and indeed Nigeria, you know, has grown. Okay, Let, let's move swiftly to the issue of security and the role of... I, I saw something which played out in 2014 before the 2015 elections, the role of the military, which became a very huge debate. The elections in Oshun State, the elections in Ekiti State, which became a lot of concern for some of us who are interested in our democratic process. Mm. And now we've seen how military came on board yes. again uh, in this election. Mm. Uh, do you think that the military did what uh, they should be doing today, for example? Well, the folks that we saw on the the military folks that we saw on the wings, highways whose responsibility was to maintain law and order and that is actually what is in the law that they are on the they are fringes fringes uh, the ones we saw on the on the fringes uh, the ones we saw on the fringes behaved quite professionally okay um they, they'll ask you questions you answer them and all of that but the reports of mm -hmm collusion yes. now helps makes me misunderstand who was play who's who was playing that role because so i am the ones i saw who were supposed to be on the road behaved professionally mm -hmm. okay the ones who became contractors yes i wouldn't then know whether they were uh, whose interest they were acting yes whether they, were, they even, were whether they were even military men mm. because the, like i said the ones who accosted us on the road treated us with reverence and civility. treated us with courtesy and civility but these other reports of people who we are driving all sorts of vehicles i cannot situate who they are and who they were working. Are, are you concerned also by the reports of violence and possible deaths in this election no certainly every one life that is lost diminishes us as a people and That's i think right. we need to continue is to it really that. worth it that anybody is killed in an election of this magnitude and this is a just legislative election. we discuss the whole context of militarization 
from the point of, of the attitude of people to elections in, in, in the first instance. Because look, look at the costs. I keep talking about the cost. We are not where people win. We claim we are in recession. We are for mm. for a for election a suspended election. We are putting in fifteen thousand soldiers. I mean, sorry, policemen. All sorts. We are throwing all of this. Who are taking allowances? Okay, that is because the attitude of the politician is that if you leave that space open, you will not. We are talking about one death.